We are here with the ESPN look at sports betting production content. We've got Scott Clark. He's the senior coordinating producer for sports betting and fantasy sports at ESPN. Scott, thanks so much for taking the time today. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys uh, have really uh, pushed into the future when it comes to sports betting. First, obviously, you oversee the Daily Wager, ESPN's uh, betting focused studio show. And then you guys have done some really interesting live productions, uh, be it the uh, uh, Daily Wager special of the uh, uh, the Nets 76ers game back in April. And then you guys have also done the Between the Lines broadcast for the uh, the NFL wildcard game last year and just recently uh, for the alternate presentation of Monday Night Football in week one. So tell me a little bit about these efforts, how they've gone, um, and how do you describe your approach to, you know, developing sports content for ESPN? Right. So, you know, from a from an overall strategic standpoint, you know, it, it's been a it's been a you know, gradual growth over the last three years, um, you know, starting with the launch of Daily Wager in in March of 2019. Um, you know, since that time, we have um, launched our digital show, Bet. Um, we've opened our studio in Las Vegas. We have added the Daily Wager podcast uh, to supplement Stanford Steve and, and the Bears podcast. You know, we've, we've hired uh, sports betting talent. We have uh, added, um, you know, Talent on radio for national ESPN radio, in addition to to you know the betcasts like we've mentioned. So it's been something where um, it's been a gradual integration across everything we've done uh, and everything we do at ESPN, but also some very betting betting focused specific content that we're trying to get in as, on as many platforms as possible. Um, you know, and I think the the integration into events is is something that you know, is a goal of ours, is something that we love to do. Um, you know, obviously we've, we've done three of them, um, you know, with two NFL and one NBA. And that's something that we'll be looking to do more and more uh, down the road. Very cool. Okay. So, uh, you know, obviously there's a, a tilt uh, that comes along with producing uh, what be it a game or studio content with the better uh, in mind. So tell me a little bit about how you think uh, producing sports betting content differs from producing more traditional um, mainstream sports content. Right. So, you know, when you work at ESPN, you know, you're always working with, you know, a high level of journalistic standards and that, so that hits everything that we do. Um, and I would say with sports betting content, we feel like we have an extra layer of, of responsibility because we know we're creating content that involves people spending money, right? So, um, you know, when we launched Daily Wager, um, I think we were overly cautious. We felt like we had to come at it really smart, really cautious. And if we didn't, it could create, you know, a negative situation for, for the company. So that was something that was always, always on top of our minds um, and being like really responsible and really smart about how we approached our content. Um, you know, I think as, as time has gone on, um, we have, you know, learned what works, learned how far we can push things. Um, and I think we feel like we're in a little bit of a better, a better spot now, um, than, than we were then. Um, you know, one significant difference I think that we have is there are just different rules sport to sport. And that's something that we have to navigate, uh, in terms of our, our league rights deals. So what is allowed for say, National Football League sports betting content is not the same for college football, not the same for NBA. So we are constantly um, navigating that as well as there are in some areas, there are different rules for betting specific content as non-betting specific content. So in some sports, we can do more on daily wager. Others, we can do less on daily wager. And we have to navigate that every day. So that's absolutely a... Um, a, a major challenge to what we do. And it's something that's just an extra layer of, um, of work that we have to put in uh, when, when we're thinking about our production. Okay. So let's go inside some of those game productions, the game integration okay. stuff that, that you guys have done. Let's start with the NBA uh, production because it was super, just very, very interesting how you guys went about it. What were some of the key elements, philosophies, goals that you went into that production of the Sixers Nets game back in April uh, with and and how do you think it went? You know, for from our standpoint, you know, we think it went well. I think we had um, you know, we learned a ton doing that first one, um, and that was really the first time that it was a full broadcast because our, our NFL broadcasts 
um, you know, we've done about 30 to 40 percent of, of the show itself, uh, of the broadcast itself. And the NFL live crew does the rest for NBA. It was really our crew and then integrating in um, Kendrick Perkins as a as a basketball analyst with our sports betting crew in Vegas. Um, you know, when we were looking to be more conversational uh, than a normal broadcast would be uh, and then, you know, supplementing um, you know, that conversation with, you know, you know, focusing that conversation around betting, uh, and being smart about different presentations. So there's conversation about the, the pregame bet. So your player props, your spread, your total, everything that locks in pregame, and then a whole separate set of conversations about the live line. So always focusing on, um, both of those things and always knowing that the adjustment of a live line during an event is always going to keep that game in play. So even if even if the 76ers are up by 15, that live line's always in play. We always have something to focus on. Even if it's a blowout, we know it's not going to be a blowout to the live line because it's constantly being adjusted. So we had those two different focuses. And then it was really um, trying to figure out how to um, how to present the odds graphically, which is a really significant um, piece of it. Um, and I think we... If you watch that game, we got significantly more aggressive in in, in supplementing um, on on the the side with with major graphics presentations during the game as it went along. We started a little slow there, and I think we realized it, that it may have looked a little bit too much like a like a normal game. That we needed to s- distinguish the broadcast visually a little more than we were. And if you watch the second half of that game, we added a lot more to it than we did in the first half. Sure. And uh, I guess one of the big questions when it comes to sports betting content is that whole, hey, how do you play to the hardcore better and how do you also keep the mainstream fan, you know, engaged? Uh, So the idea, though, of an alternate broadcast, right, is the idea of you can watch the game on the linear main linear telecast if you like. So how do you try to balance that? those two you know goals in terms of again the hardcore better the casual fan or do you are you just saying okay if you want to go watch the regular broadcast you go over there if you're interested in betting you come over here you know i think for the for the betcasts um i think we have i think we've leaned a little sophisticated there um certainly i think if, if you look at what the the the, the average better is doing they are betting pregame they're not involved in in as much in live betting, you know, they're betting point total, uh, point spread, um, you know, money line. And we discuss that. We track that we track player props. I think we know that there's interest in player props and we know that that's a, that's a fun thing to discuss and a fun thing to, um, to track, but we also, um, dug in on the live lines, discussed it. And I think that means much more toward the sophisticated better and sort of where things may head in the future with sports betting content. But, um, you know, so, I wouldn't say that we, we, um, abandoned you know, went too casual. You know, I, I, I think, I think we certainly put an emphasis on making sure that we're doing explanations when we get sophisticated. So if we're doing something that we think is on the more sophisticated side, our talent, Doug Kazarian is going to do a quick explanation of that's what this means so that people can learn alongside of it, but we don't necessarily, go into it with the intention of teaching and we don't go into it with the intention of, um, you know, you know, it's really like teaching a non better on a betting specific broadcast that you're opting into, to, to watch. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting how you mentioned that there was the first half, first half and the second half and how different those two products were and how much you learned just within the, the duration of the game. So I'm right. curious now moving forward, uh, you know, what did you learn that you might do differently next time? What do you think really worked that you're going to lean into next time? What, what were some of the key takeaways? Well, I, I think the first thing that, um, you know, that really hit me is that we needed something visually to grab your attention. And, and I don't know if we had that the whole time because that, you know, and, and it hit me, um, we, ESPN did the, the Marvel game a week or two later. And if you watch that Marvel game, it was just such, there was so much going on visually in that game and that broadcast that if you turned it on, you knew you, you really knew you were watching something different and it was sort of hard to, hard to take your eye off that. Yeah. So that was one thing that, 
you know, it's been, we did NFL, then we did NBA, then we did NFL again. So when we got through that, that NBA, um, we knew that we needed to incorporate a live, the live line on screen the entire time, updating the entire time for future broadcasts. And we did that. Uh, we did that on week one, Monday night football. So that was one, one learning for me was we have to have those odds on screen the entire time and moving the entire time. So comparing the live line to the the closing line pregame and what that was and what that is now as a, as something that's constantly changing. So that's something that we identified as one area. And then I think the other thing is, you know, if you watch that broadcast, you know, part of what we learned, you know, we had in the second half is people are approaching their props and people are, you know, bets are about to get graded, right? So usually in the first quarter of the game, you're not getting, you know, uh, you know, Joel Embiid's not going to hit his, you know, 27 and a half right. points in the first quarter. He's going to hit that third, fourth. So we had a lot more opportunities in that second half of the game to really lock in on that stuff, create graphics around that. And then, okay, He's at the foul line. He's at 27 and a half. He's at 26 points right now. If he makes both, he's going to hit it. We put it up. There's a lot of opportunity there in the second half. So I think there's going to be a lot more planning in the future for what's the first half equivalent of that. Is that, you know, futures, is it, um, you know, other things around the league that we can put an emphasis on to create that extra look, that better conversation in the first half where we don't have that all these props and all these bets that are going to be graded as the game comes to a close. Sure. Right. You, you have more uh, th- things to fill, right. In the first half, there's a lot more to cover uh, once the game is, is begun to play out in the second half um, at staying on sort of, you know, looking forward and, and what you think is, is coming and what you guys might want to, to improve on. Are there any specific areas that you see fans really gravitating to in sports betting? You talked about obviously the, the live line and, and in-game betting, uh, what's some some areas that you think uh, fans are are migrating to, and as a result, you guys can try to serve from a content scenario? Yeah, and, and there, there's plenty of them. I think one one example is, and and we've seen it a couple times the last few weeks, and I'm not sure I'm not sure ESPN has taken advantage of these as, the way that we could have is just we know that people are going to gravitate toward money and stories where there's a lot of money at stake. So we've had a couple stories. Um, early in the NFL season about, um, you know, these big, big parlays where there's, you know, there was one where there was 600, dollars $700,000 on the line on Monday night football, um, you know, which he, he cashed out. Uh, there's another one um, with about $150,000 on the line. And we know that those stories are going to going to um, draw attention. And we know that people are going to gravitate toward them simply because of th- the, the amount of money that's involved. So right. we know that those stories, those crazy bets, parlays, teasers, all those stuff, big futures we've had success with um, in the past. Um, you know, when the St. Louis Blues won the Stanley Cup, we had a, a better who bet them, I believe, at 300 to one early. Uh, one, yeah, 300 to one, I believe, um, during the season when they were last in the Western Conference, um, you know, and, you know, ended up winning a ton of money when they won the cup. So we know that those stories are going to resonate. Um, I think also, you know, I think second sports betting itself is, is no different than any other content where, you know, if there's a great story, people are going to gravitate to it. And it's an emphasis for us to find those stories. And there have been some examples um, where we've been able to do that, um, especially on the digital side. Um, you know, we had a recent story by, by our um, a sports betting reporter, David Purdom about, the head fake, which is, uh, you know, betting syndicates uh, pushing, a, you know, betting against what they think to keep, a, to move a line one way and then bet it the other way. Um, and, you know, it was a great story that, you know, was, was pegged around what happened at the WNBA All-Star game where uh, the line was about 40 points too high and they, they bet over to start and it pushed the lines up across the industry and then they all bet under and they, and they, they crush the books on it. So right. these sort of great stories, no different than if you're producing sports center or a feature for a college game day, um, any interesting story people are always going to gravitate to. And we just have to find those stories. Um, you know, the third thing we're finding is just content around specific significant events. So, you know, the Island games, uh, say for NFL, Monday night football, Thursday night football, Sunday night football, creating content, 
um, in the, in the time leading up to those games. And um, just knowing that if a game's on national TV, it's the only game going on. There's going to, people are going to have interest in betting on that game. It may not be their own team, but there's going to be a lot of betting interest in those national primetime games. I think we'll see it in baseball playoffs. I think we'll see it in, um, you know, we certainly see it for, for NBA playoffs as well. Uh, and then the, the last one I would just highlight here is, is bad beats, um, sure. which, which people love. Obviously it's the, the, you know, probably most known thing that ESPN does with sports betting is Scott Van Pelt's bad beats. We know it resonates. We know people love it. So I think that's the other thing. And, and part of that is um, just the nature of it itself. And I think part of it is, um, you know, Scott Van Pelt and Stanford Steve and how, how compelling their presentation of that segment is. Um, and that really takes it to another level. So those are a bunch of things um, that we're seeing that are, uh, you know, that fans gravitate to. Cool. So those are some content plays that are potentially coming down in the future. You guys have anything on the books or close to on the books in terms of any uh, game productions or new shows or, or new content uh, that's going to revolve around sports betting? You know, nothing, um, nothing definite at this point. Um, you know, I think on the, on the, on the game side, it's certainly something that we're going to be um, targeting. We don't have any on the schedule at the moment. Uh, but I, I expect us to do so, and I, we'd love to go into to more sports in addition to to NFL and NBA. But we're, you know, I think we're hoping to have this NFL season, this NBA season. Like we're always in. That's a it's a place that we want to get to to do more of these to do them regularly. We're not quite there yet, but it's something that we we want to be doing. Um, you know, I think some areas where we could see growth, but you know, nothing locked in yet. You know, social media presence is something that ESPN doesn't have beyond um, talent talent accounts right now. So that, that's an area that I think we look at and there's, there's certainly room for growth and it's, um, you know, getting that up and running, but that's something that's, um, you know, you know, we're looking at. And then and I think on the audio side is another thing where we started to get more. So we have, um, you know, Joe Fornbaugh, Doug Kazarian are, are, are co-hosting radio on weekend mornings uh, right now during football season, you know, leading into NFL and college football games. Uh, and then, you know, we're getting, you know, if you listen to, you know, national ESPN radio, we have talent contributing sports betting content every day across all our shows. So that's something that's been you know, really new, getting that consistent cadence uh, on the audio side uh, for, for, for national radio recently. Uh, so that's something we've had a lot of growth there and we can, we think that we can, uh, we'll have some more down the road, hopefully. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to ask you to break out your crystal ball now as we finish up. Uh, look, the, the sports betting landscape in the United States has just transformed dramatically over the last few years as we see state by state, uh, more legalization, as we see, uh, obviously, plenty of uh, interest and money going into content creation around sports betting. So I'm curious, as somebody that's on the front lines, Give me maybe a prediction uh, or just an expectation of how you expect sports betting content and production to evolve in the next year or so. And then maybe more importantly, in the next five years or so. You know, I think in the next, you know, I, I think we've seen a lot of growth very recently, um, even in just in the, th since the start of football season. Right. Uh, and, and I think we'll continue to see growth like that, where we are getting, um, you know, we're having odds in Sunday NFL countdown, Monday night countdown, uh, the, in, 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 in uh, conversation around odds, not to a major extent, but we, we are having it. Uh, and we've never had that before. So pregame windows, we're starting to get in NFL. Um, I think pregames, half times, you know, I think those are, those are areas I think that there's a lot of opportunity for. I don't know when we'll get there, but I think that we will get, we will get there. Um, and I think, I think it's really going to come down to integration into everything that we're doing. So I think at this point, there are areas of uh, our content on the, um, on the linear side, uh, on the digital side, where there's a lot of sports betting and some where there's none. And some of that may be based on, um, you know, league rights and restrictions and things like that. I think over time, that's going to relax in a significant way. And I think that we will have... Um, really like real legitimate sports betting integration into all content. I think that's where it's headed. The question is, is that a two year, three year, five year? It's not going to be in one year. I don't think it's gonna be in one year. 
but I think it's I think it's coming. Um, I think what's going to be longer. I think in of in event, you know, like when you're if you're watching the normal e one ESPN broadcast of an NBA game versus is it a second screen or an alternate broadcast? I'm not sure when we're getting into that that main broadcast, um, but I think we'll have more alternate broadcasts. I think we'll have more integration into shows more into pregame halftime. And I think over time um, we'll get that full integration, but I, I don't know if we'll get there until there's even additional legalization um, for some key States. Sure. Sure. But you guys are ready when, uh, when it comes, it seems like the, the content yeah. factory is up and running. Yeah, for sure. And there, you know, I think there's, there's buy-in from across the organization and, it, and, and it's a matter of, um, you know, getting everything sort of lined up and ready, but it's, um, there's, there's, you know, I don't see internal opposition or anything like that to it. So that's very positive for, you know, across our content groups. Sure. Well, we know it's coming. We know that the, uh, the sports wedding, uh, sports betting wave is here, but it's only going to grow. And uh, Scott, that's why we really appreciate you taking some time to chat with us, go behind the scenes, give us a look at your guys' operation and, uh, and keep at it. And thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.